Turner syndrome is the topic for this video. And Turner syndrome is a genetic condition. Normal females will have 46XX as their karyotype, but girls with Turner syndrome will have 45X. Sometimes it's written as 45X dash or 45XO. Essentially, all of these represent the same thing, that the patient is missing an X chromosome. This happens in approximately one out of every 2,500 live female births. However, 99% of 45X conceptions abort spontaneously. Another important aspect of Turner syndrome is that many of these cases are known as mosaics. And what that means is that they're a combination of 45X and 46XX. So in these patients, their phenotype can be normal. However, if you have a classic Turner syndrome genotype of 45X, this is what results in the Turner phenotype. So let's talk about this phenotype, what aspects are involved. Symptoms and signs. Patients with Turner syndrome tend to have short stature. They can also have high blood pressure on physical exam. And this is due to a condition known as coarctation of the aorta. So over here you have the normal aorta. And over on the other side you have the coarctation, which essentially just means a narrowing of this uh, blood vessel. And that can lead to high blood pressure. Another physical exam finding is swelling, also referred to as lymphedema, in particular of the hands and feet. Webbed neck is a classic feature in Turner syndrome. Widely spaced nipples. And an inability to undergo puberty or begin menses. And this happens because the ovaries are devoid of ova. They don't have the ova that are needed. And this is known as gonadal dysgenesis. I'd like to show you a few pictures now. This is a patient with Turner syndrome and this is the classic webbed neck finding. And this patient also presents with widely spaced nipples. Here's another photo. This photo also shows the web neck. Patient also shows the widely spaced nipples. And if you look at her feet, you can see that she does have swelling and that is the lymphedema. So now let's get into the diagnosis. Of course, the appearance of the patient and the physical exam findings that I just previously mentioned. Of course, a karyotype, which will show that classic 45XO pattern. And here is that karyotype. As you can see, all the chromosomes are normal, except down here, it's missing that X chromosome. And this is, of course, a girl. So normally, you would expect her to have two X chromosomes, and one is missing, and therefore she has XO. An MRI or echocardiogram is used to detect cardiovascular anomalies, such as the coarctation of the aorta that I previously mentioned. And in some patients, you have a condition in the heart known as bicuspid aortic valve. Now remember I mentioned something called gonadal dysgenesis. This is very important because this will result in low estrogen levels. And if you remember, estrogen levels are increased by two hormones, FSH and LH. Now if estrogen levels are low, then 
the negative feedback that normally happens will not happen. So as a result, FSH and LH levels will rise, and that is a finding also in Turner syndrome. And I must mention that there are numerous other ongoing tests and specialists involved. Treatment of Turner syndrome, of course you want to manage all the comorbid conditions. Surgically you can repair the cardiac abnormalities. Growth hormone is given to help stimulate growth. Estrogen replacement to initiate puberty. And finally I wanted to mention that oral contraceptive pills containing estrogen and progesterone are given to help maintain secondary sexual characteristics. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. A teenage girl is brought to the pediatrician by her mother because she has not started her menstruation. The child and her family recently immigrated to this country and the mother says that although the patient's immunizations are current, she was not routinely seen by a physician. Pertinent on physical examination is that the girl appears short for her age. She has a webbed neck and underdeveloped breasts with widespread nipples due to a shield-shaped chest. The most likely karyotype that this patient has is. Well, I hope by now you know that this is a relatively classic presentation for Turner syndrome. And the karyotype is 45X0. That would be choice C. A 14-year-old female is evaluated for delayed puberty and short stature. Her height is three standard deviations below the mean for her age. She exhibits a webbed neck, low-set ears, fish-like mouth, and ptosis. Biopsy of her ovary reveals the presence of fibrous stroma arranged in horals. Chromosomal analysis shows a 45XO karyotype. Which of the following lab findings would be most likely in this individual? Remember, in Turner syndrome, because of the gonadal dysgenesis, which they're actually describing right here, you get low levels of estrogen. And if you remember, FSH and LH are responsible for helping increase estrogen levels. So if estrogen levels are chronically low, this negative feedback does not occur. So if it does not occur, FSH and LH levels will rise. So let's go through all of these. In Turner syndrome, plasma levels of growth hormone and thyroid hormone are typically normal. Choice C, increased plasma FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. Yes, that is true. Increased plasma inhibin and increased plasma estrogen. Well, estrogen levels are low, so that's wrong. And inhibin levels are also low in Turner syndrome, so that's wrong. So the answer is C. Genetic analysis of a female baby with broad enlarged neck extending almost to the baby's shoulders demonstrates an XO karyotype. When the baby reaches puberty, hormone replacement therapy should be begun with which of the following agents? To maintain secondary sexual characteristics, it is beneficial to give oral contraceptive pills that contain both estrogen and progesterone. 